Okay, in this video I'm going to discuss an example of maximum likelihood as it applies to a normal distribution. And um, I'm getting really excited here. Well, all this hard work that we've put in, learning what expectation is, learning what discrete continuous random variables are, uh, learning what the central limit theorem is, is really going to start to pay dividends for us. And it's going to allow us to see where the method of least squares come from. Like I, I know that you've seen before in some class that if you want to find a line of best fit, the standard method is least squares. Well, what's so special about least squares? We're going to talk about that. Um, the weird formula for sample standard deviation, we will talk about that and why it actually is a um, little bit of a mistake that it's called the unbiased standard deviation often. And then we're also going to look at hypothesis testing and try to get a handle on why those formulas for the cutoff values really apply. Okay, so first here, we're just going to do an example of estimating the mean of a normal distribution based on sample data. So suppose, I don't want to underline, that x1, x2, up to xn, I'm going to write those in in a little bit, um, are observations of a normally distributed random variable estimate the mean using the method of maximum likelihood. Okay, so let me write in my observations here. I've got x1, x2, all the way up to xn. We'll recall that the PDF for a normal random variable is f sub x of x is equal to, it's sort of ugly, 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma times e to the negative x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. And I forgot to mention this example is very close to what's done in the text. In the text I do an example of maximum likelihood for the normal distribution, finding the mean, but I give you actual numerical observations. Here I'm just letting these, um, these parameters represent my observations. And the method of maximum likelihood, if we're wanting to estimate mu, then we do so by maximizing, right, that's why it's called maximum likelihood, and some, t some sources even refer to this as the, as the likelihood function uh, for continuous random variables, the product of the PDFs evaluated at the observations. F sub x of xi. Now in our case, that means we're multiplying all these together. Okay. So I have the product from i equals 1 to n, f sub x, Oh, whoops, I don't want to write f sub x again. I'm going to actually fill in this formula. 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma times e to the negative xi minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. Now, this product notation might be a little unfamiliar to you, so I'm going to write out what the product would look like. And it's going to take up some space, so I need to start way over here. So I'll have 1 over the square root of 2 pi. What that means is I plug in the first value, i equals 1. So I have e to the minus x1 minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. And then I'm going to multiply that by what I get if I plug in the next value, which is i equals 2. So it'll be x sub 2 here. And then I multiply and I keep going until I get to plugging in i equals n. So I have 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma times e to the negative x sub n minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. And let me scroll down here. Now if I do that, then look, I have n factors that all look the same. 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma. So I'm going to have a 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma to the power of n. And then I have e to these n powers. Now if I multiply e to a power by e to the power by e to a power, those powers can be added. So I have e to the power of negative x1 minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared minus x2 minus mu squared 
over to sigma squared minus, and we keep going until we get to, whoops, uh, xn minus mu squared over to sigma squared. Now, our goal here, I want to remind you of that, is to estimate mu. In, in terms of mu, sigma squared is not, we're not worried about what sigma is, the standard deviation. We can think of that as a constant. Okay, so all I'm doing out here is multiplying by a constant. It doesn't matter what mu is, that doesn't affect this constant. So I can just ignore this constant. And instead, to maximize this whole quantity, make it as large as possible, I want to make the power of E as large as possible. Okay, so let's rewrite this here. I have 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma, and I'm going to make that power of e a little bit simpler. I got the minus sign, I'm going to pull out a minus out of all those terms, and also I'm going to pull out a 1 over 2 sigma squared, because it shows up in all of those. And then once I do that, I have the sum of x1 minus mu squared, and sum of an x2 minus mu squared, all the way up to xn minus mu squared, and now it's into a sum, x1 minus, or excuse me, that should be xi, since I'm summing in general, and we're letting i range from 1 to n. Okay, so again, this is constant with respect to mu, and so is this negative 1 times 2, 1 over 2 sigma squared. Now, if I want to maximize this entire quantity, I maximize that exponent. But since it has this negative sign up front here, if I want to maximize the whole quantity, I minimize the sum. Let me write that down here. So this implies that I minimize, and then I'm actually going to write out the sum. Because this is a great little stopping point, like a little vista. Just sort of soak in what we have here. So I minimize the sum of x1 minus mu squared plus the sum of x2 minus mu squared all the way up to xn minus mu squared. And the reason I think this is a great vista point is that this is least squares. Okay, that's exactly what least squares means. It means sum, the, uh, minimize the sum, that's where least comes from, uh, the sum of the squared deviations from the mean. All right, and that's what we have here. Now, since um, we're dealing with a very specific case, we want, to, we want to estimate this mu for a normal distribution, I'm going to go ahead and go through the work here. Now, in the text, I just went to Wolfram Alpha for this part, and I'm not going to do that um, this time. This time I'm actually going to do it algebraically. So, let's see what happens here. And if I want to minimize that, what I'm going to do is um, expand out each of these binomials squared. So I have x1 squared minus 2x1 mu plus mu squared plus x2 squared minus 2x2 mu plus mu squared. And I do that n times, and the last time I do it, I'm going to have xn squared minus 2 x and mu plus mu squared. And maybe it'll be a little bit easier if I put um, the squared binomial in parentheses. Okay. All right, well now I'm going to put my um, mu squared terms together. So I have mu squared, mu squared, and mu squared shows up in each of these n terms, so I have n times mu squared. And now how about mu? What do I have times mu? I have a minus 2x1, a minus 2x2, all the way up to minus 2xn. So this is minus 2 times x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xn times mu. Okay, and the reason I left this mu on the right will be apparent in a little bit. And then finally I have x1 squared plus x2 squared all the way up to xn squared. And I'll put that in parentheses. x1 squared plus x2 squared all the way up to xn squared. 
Okay, so now if I'm thinking of mu as the variable, and that's really what I want to think about. These observations in an actual experiment, they're going to be given. They're what I'm using to estimate mu. So mu is my variable here. I'm going to choose it so that this whole quantity is as small as possible. Well, we have a mu squared times a number, we have a mu times a number, and then we just have a number. That's a quadratic. If I think of mu as the, um, as the variable here. Not only so, but the coefficient of mu squared, the leading coefficient, is positive, so that means we open up. In other words, uh, the vertex of the parabola is the minimum. So if we can just find the first coordinate of that vertex, right, if, usually you think of this as x squared and then x and then a number, and it would be the x coordinate, but here we have mu squared. So if we can find the first coordinate of that vertex, then we're done. That's what will minimize um, the value of the expression, which is the output of this, uh, the output of this some of the squared deviations up here is what gives us the y value on the parabola. Okay, so I'm going to switch gears a little bit. And I'm going to go back to x. Let's suppose that we have ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the usual way that we write a quadratic. And I'm going to complete the square. Okay, so there's lots of different ways, sorry if I'm not using the same notation that you're used to, um, but the first thing I'm going to do is factor out an A. Out of only the first two terms. Okay. And now, what I want to eventually get to is A times X plus or minus something squared. And when I, um, when I distribute this out, when I expand the binomial, I get 2 times the something times x. And that's what shows up as my x term up here. So, what should this something be? Well, it should end up being b over 2a. Alright, so if I need a b over 2a here, well then I need a number so that um, that'll suck up the b over 2a squared. So the b over 2a squared is equal to that number here. So let's just put that in. I have a times x squared plus b over ax plus, I need this squared, so I'm just going to put it there b squared over 4a squared. But of course we know that changes the expression unless I also subtract it. And if I subtract it, then I haven't actually changed the quantity. I've just changed how it's written. Okay, and now I'm going to break off this subtraction term. And I have a times x squared plus b over ax plus b squared over 4a squared. And then if I multiply a by this, I get minus b squared over 4a and then a plus c. So what do I have here? I have plus c minus b squared over 4a. And we actually go through a very similar calculation to what we're doing right now in the next section. So I have as a footnote that uh, um, the vertex is at negative b over 2a or minus b over 2a, at least the first coordinate. That's negative b over 2a, and that's where that comes from. And I, I do cite this, um, this completed square in the footnote there. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can scroll up, and here's our a. Our a is in, and here's our b. Uh, negative 2 times the sum of the x's. So this negative sign out front will cancel with that sign, and... What do we end up with? Let me see if I can leave that in sight. We end up with the estimate for mu, right? That's the mu value that's going to minimize this quantity. And since we have a parabola, we're going to look at that vertex where the parabola opens up. Okay. That's just going to be 2 times the sum of the x's divided by 2a, so 2n. I'm going to have to scroll down here. Okay. 
and actually if I'm going to scroll down I want to move this it's a little bit too close to what's up above it okay well I can cancel out those twos and I get the sum of the x's divided by n but wait a second we know what that is. That's quite familiar. I add up all the values and divide by how many are, there are. That's the sample mean. Okay, all I have is a sample mean. And that makes a whole lot of sense. Once again, we really, we really probably would have guessed that even before we ever knew anything about the method of maximum likelihood. What I'm showing you here is that the method of, method of maximum likelihood actually makes a lot of sense. And um, in a situation where our intuition isn't quite as strong, we'll see that the method of maximum likelihood is indeed what gives us least squares regression. That's where the least squares regression comes from. Okay, so that's it. For our estimate of the mean, we just take the average of the values. And you'll probably notice that that was the case in the um, example in the text as well.